Okay, we are a little bit behind with the main lecture, so we are a little bit out of uh, sync uh, with, uh, uh, with this part of the course because uh, uh, this was intended, Karger's algorithm was intended to be shown after we finish max flow in the main uh, lecture uh, because uh, uh, what we are going to show is, well, uh, there are many algorithms of, uh, uh, for finding a max flow. The most efficient one runs in time number of vertices cube, right? That's the fastest uh, deterministic algorithm that we have. Uh, so what we are going to show is uh, that um, essentially, um, Max flow can find for you, finding max flow will be equivalent, will, will automatically produce finding a minimal cut. Now, Karger, uh, so remember in uh, network flow, you have to have sync and uh, source in the opposite sides of the partition. So if you are looking for globally minimal cut in a graph, right? If you are looking at a globally minimal cut, then you have to fix uh, one vertex uh, uh, as a uh, source and then you range over um, all other uh, vertices uh, and uh, find max flows uh, when the sink is uh, uh, any of these right points and then you pick the smallest cut as possible. So optimal max flow, which is actually a very tricky algorithm um, called the pre-flow uh, relabel, runs in time uh, v cube. So if you range with the, the sink all over the graph, this uh, will amount to total cost of v to the fourth power. And that's horrendously expensive if uh, V is large. Uh, and in all serious applications, uh, V is in fact uh, uh, quite large. So we, the alternative to solving uh, uh, mean cut through max flow algorithms is this Karger's algorithm. And we will show that it runs uh, much, much faster than, um, than V cube. In fact, uh, it runs uh, in time uh, V squared times uh, log uh, V to uh, uh, cube. Now you see uh, this dropped for two, right? It's quadratic here and log V is much, much smaller. So even if you cube it, uh, it's still much more, much smaller than V squared, so you get a substantially faster algorithm. So it's really practically, it's a practical algorithm that uh, solves the problem of finding mean cut much faster than deterministic algorithms. So it's really useful, but uh, to be honest with you, for me the main attraction is it's just extraordinarily beautiful. It's, uh, the trick is just ingenious. So, um, is you want to split your, you are given an undirected and for simplicity assume that it's a connected graph because otherwise uh, mean cut is of capacity zero, right? Um, so it's connected weighted graph with all weights of all edges are positive uh, reals, uh, right? And you want to, um, now here it's undirected graph and uh, unlike, of course, uh, in flow we assume that the graph is directed, but of course we don't uh, restrict possibility to have edges in both directions, so it's reduced. Uh, Undirected case is uh, immediately reducible to directed case. Uh, so here the capacity of a cut is just the sum total of weights of all edges that go across 
that cut so one side is in one side of the partition, the other end is in the other partition, and you simply sum up the capacity of all the edges, and what you are looking for is a partition so that this sum of capacities is as small as possible. Okay, so now, um, we say that an edge, just for simplicity of uh, terminology, we say that an edge belongs to a cut if it crosses the cut. One side of the edge is in one side of partition and the other into the other, in the other. Okay, so uh, the trick is you, the algorithm is obtained by actually kind of double iterative refinement. So first we will produce a um, algorithm that doesn't quite solve the problem and then we will, but it's kind of instructive to do it that way to understand why Karger did it in the way uh, he did it. Uh, so we will first show a kind of approach that doesn't quite work, but we want to see what part caused trouble and then refine the algorithm to overcome the difficulty, right? So what is the main operation of the, in the, uh, in design of, in this algorithm? It's fusing vertices, right? We saw this last time. By the way, I expect great gratitude because you wouldn't believe how much time it took me to draw all these pictures <laughs> and to make these slides. So I expect you, when I wake you up in the midnight, that you know this by heart, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, the, what is the operation? The operation is just uh, um, fusing, ah, shoot, here the pipe is missing between U and V. <laughs> um, darn, I knew I would mess up something. Okay, so imagine here a pipe uh, of very, very light blue color. So, <laughs> You, few, you collapse this edge and you get a new vertex, so no other vertex changes, but instead of U and V, you get a single vertex UV and the capacities of uh, uh, pipes to that edge are simply the capacities of the pipes from that edge to U and if there is, uh, also a pipe from X to V, then you simply add up the capacities and you replace these two pipes if there are two. Maybe there is only one, then nothing changes, but uh, uh, if uh, a vertex here has connection to both of the vertices, then after collapse, the capacities uh, sum up. Okay, so, um, we denote this uh, new graph as G U V. So it's a really, really simple. I, yes. Uh, weight of U V disappears. It disappears. Yep, it's just gone, ignored. Sorry. Well, that's what you have to see. <laughs> right. The whole point is. Uh, that, in fact, not caring about it will get you in trouble, right? So, um, might get you in trouble. So, you have to be careful uh, when you drop the edges uh, what's uh, happening. Okay. So, uh, so, this edge, so, this edge disappears altogether and we get this. So, you see, it's extraordinary a simple operation. So what can we say about this operation? We can say that uh, if you have a mean cut, now notice there can be several mean cuts, right? Several cuts that are exactly of the same capacity. So there is no reason why there should be exactly uh, one, all right? Um, so if U and V are on the same side of the partition of that cut. Then the capacity, after collapse, the capacity of that cut does not change, right? 
The capacity doesn't change. And this picture is kind of self-explanatory. This pipe disappeared, but anyhow, it's not part, it does not belong to the cut. It's completely on one side. And these two guys will add up. So the capacity across the cut is exactly the same. So as you are doing the collapsing, if you are lucky, never to collapse things that are across the mean cut, then when you collapse everything into a single edge, if you keep doing it, right? But somehow you are lucky never to pick uh, points that are on the opposite side on the, cap, on the cut, then of course the capacity of that final edge will be precisely the capacity of that mean cut. Right? But this is obviously a pretty optimistic, um, a pretty optimistic assumption. And Karger must have been an incurable optimist if he thought uh, that he can get away with this. And to my dismay, he did get away with that. So um, now what happens if we do, if uh, you and we do cross the mean cut. So now you and we get fused together, right? Now um, you get this picture here and uh, um, the claim is that if the vertices are on the opposite side on the cut, then the capacity of the mean cut in that graph might only increase. You can never have smaller capacity cut, but the capacity only increases. How do we show that? It's very simple. Um, so now notice this is a point of confusion. Uh, so when you collapse you and uh, uh, v, the pipe, as you pointed out, the pipe disappears. So prima facie, uh, it might be that uh, the capacity of this cut is even smaller, but this cannot be the case for the following reason here. So instead of looking at the, what happens to the original mean cut, just take the new graph and find any of its mean cuts, right? And then you simply split open U and V, right? Keeping them in the same side of that mean cut in the uh, new graph GUV, right? So you keep them you split them open, keeping both vertices in the same x. Now, by what we just have shown, for the case when u and v are on the same side, capacity of this cut is equal to the capacity of the yellow cut, this mean cut there. So this cut, there is a cut in the original graph of exactly the same capacity. So then the smallest possible cut here can be only smaller than the smallest cut here because for the smallest cut here, there is a corresponding cut of exactly the same capacity um, in G and thus uh, the then whatever is minimal cut here can be only smaller because voila, there is a cut here that has this capacity here. So, of course, there can be several mean cuts, and even if you ruin one of the mean cuts, maybe there is another one that survived the, the surgery, right? Uh, but the options are bad thing can happen only if you collapse a vertex, uh, sorry, an edge that crosses the mean cut, right? So now we want to estimate uh, What's the probability to be so darn lucky that after you collapse everything to just two vertices, uh, um, the, these two will belong to opposite side of a mean cut? 
so the, the mean cut will be exactly the same. So that's our uh, algorithm. How, what is our algorithm in detail? We will do the following. We will pick edges at random. So it's a randomized algorithm. We pick edges at random, but with probabilities that are proportional to the weights or capacities, if you will, right? The weight here is, we call it capacity. Uh, so we pick edge according to its weight. Notice that because of this division, sum total of all of these over all edges is equal to one because sum total of tops will be exactly this. So heavy edges are much more likely to be picked than the light edges. Okay, and we continue until only one edge is left and we output that this is our estimate of the mean cut. Yes, so you simply I think how you would write a program to to implement this, right? You would take uniform distribution and you would split interval in small intervals that are uh, whose sum is exactly one and the weights are, uh, and the sizes of the interval are precisely the weights over this. Yeah, so uh, you, you normalize uh, to, to make it uh, to add up to one, right? How do we do that? So what I'm saying is simply uh, take an interval that is of uh, uh, length, if you don't want, uh, that is of length uh, sum of all weights, and then partition here this interval into precisely the weights, and then call a random number gen generator uh, within this uh, uh, limit, right? And then probabilities will be exactly uh, right. Okay, so now let us see what is the probability. So this is the theorem. Probability that you ruin, your, that your construction fails probability that you get actually uh, after one uh, that uh, this is really I should um, da, 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 this is not a good uh, um, is larger than the capacity of a minimal cut G is smaller than let me see so G uh, then the probability, ah no, that's correct. The probability that the capacity of a minimal cut in G is larger than the capacity of a minimal cut uh, in G is smaller than two over N. So after you collapse vertices U and V, probability that uh, the new graph will have larger, that you fail, uh, it will be bigger than, um, uh, will be smaller than 2 over n, right? So this is the failure because mean cut of the collapsed graph is larger than mean cut of the capacity G. And we want to show that this can happen with probability that is smaller than 2 over n. How do we prove that? Well, um, um, So we fix a mean cut, right? In order to ruin uh, that, uh, you know, the construction to ruin everything, actually capacity of every, um, uh, you, you would have to uh, ruin, uh, you know, uh, all of the mean cuts after the collapse. Uh, maybe you ruin only one, but uh, uh, this is, so this is a conservative uh, uh, estimate, but it is good enough. So let them be a mean cut in G. So let's see what is the probability that this particular mean cut is ruined, right? So maybe another mean cut is not ruined, so the whole graph still has the same mean cut, but we will uh, just uh, see what's the probability that this particular 
uh, mean cut be ruined and this will, we will call failure even though it might not be necessary, right? So probability that mean cap capacity of this is bigger than this is precisely the probability that edge belongs to the mean cut, that you collapsed an edge that belongs to mean cut. But that's easy to estimate because that probability is simply sum of the weights of all pipes across the mean cut over sum of all weights. So now we want to uh, estimate this guy and we will um, do that with this simple trick. And amazing, you know what really amazes me in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, proof is that uh, um, all the estimates are actually incredibly lousy, right? But somehow when you combine them, they work just uh, enough. So you have to be incredible optimist and not to say, my God, what am I doing? This will never work, right? So um, the, this is a simple equality that uh, uh, about the total capacity of all pipes in the graph because if you uh, sum up over all possible vertices capacities of all edges incident to that vertex, some total over the entire graph will be exactly twice the capacities of all edges, right? Because every edge will be counted twice, once for this end and once for that end. So this equality is correct. And now what I say this optimistic thing is, uh, now notice that uh, this sum so this always for any vertex, the sum of capacities of incident edges is of course larger or equal than the mean cut. Why? Well, here is one cut. Take this vertex alone and take all other vertices in the other side of the partition. This is a cut and its capacity can be only bigger or equal than the capacity of the minimal cut. So we have that uh, some of the weights across the cut are certainly bigger than mean capacity, and we do it n time. So for each vertex, and there are n vertices, we will, this guy must be bigger than the capacity of the minimal cut, so thus twice this must be bigger then n times the minimal capacity, or if you divide both sides by two, you get that sum of weights of all edges in your graph are bigger than n over two times mean capacity. So now you substitute this in the previous formula, in this formula here on the bottom, right, for the minimal cut m, and you can then um, get this, right? This is precisely, or instead of t here should be, I guess this is for any, uh, for the, I, I used m and I don't know why I switched to t here. This should be m, minimal cut. So this is the capacity of mean cut and some total of all capacities uh, we just saw is uh, um, uh, this guy is smaller than n over 2 times mean cut capacity, so thus this ratio is bigger than 2 goes on the other side, 2 over n. So probability to hit a edge from a mean cut is smaller than 2 over n. So probability to ruin a particular mean cut by a uh, collapse of two vertices is smaller than 2 over n. So let us now see what is the probability that after you keep doing that, uh, you are always lucky and you, uh, at least one of the mean cuts will survive. Well, uh, the probability of this is uh, this, right? A probability 
that after collapse, nothing bad happens, is probability that not at a single stage, right? So imagine you have sequence of, uh, uh, you, this is your ori or original graph, and first here you fuse these two together, then here you fuse these two together and so forth until you end up with just two vertices, right? So probability not to mess up at each stage, right, is at least 1 minus 2 over n, right? Because this is probability to mess it up, right? To choose an edge that is across the mean cut. So it will be 1 minus 2 over n. Then in the next round, the number of vertices drops. So it's n minus 1. All the way at the very end <coughs> is just 2 thirds, right? Because uh, right, you will have only two uh, vertices at the, at the very end. So if you write this in slightly different form, this is n minus 2, n minus 3, and so forth. Notice uh, n minus 2 and n minus 2 cancel, n minus 3, n minus 3 cancel. So only these two guys didn't get canceled, n, n minus 1. And on top, uh, this 4 cancels this 4, this 3 cancels this 3. So here you are, and we will end up with just 2. So this is 2 over n times n minus 1, which is, of course, bigger than 1 over n uh, squared, right? So, but, so probability is that uh, you are bloody lucky is of order 1 over n squared, and n is gigantic, right? So, in other words, probability not to mess up is ridiculously small. And this is what I find irritating about this guy, Karger, right? He didn't give it up here. So, what did he do? Bloody bastard came up with the following idea. You see, he actually figured out that bad things happen only towards the end. Because as the graph gets smaller and smaller, probability to hit the mean cut uh, increases dramatically, and this is what messes up the whole thing. So he says, instead of going all the way collapsing all but two vertices. Let me collapse only n over too many vertices. So I stop halfway through. If you stop halfway through, then you have the product of the same guys, except you stop at n over 2. Now, if you write this again in the same way, Again, these guys cancel. Again, the same thing is on the bottom. But on the top, what you get is these two guys. n over 2 minus 1, n over 2 minus 2. And guess what? This is about n squared divided by 4. This is about n squared, so this is very close. This is almost one quarter, very close to one quarter. So it's not terribly... Uh, um, you know, it's a little bit less than one quarter, but it doesn't change the argument. So if you do collapsing until you halve the number of vertices, you have a reasonable chance of success, which is one-fourth, because if you repeat it four times, right, probability of success will be uh, pretty large, right? And that's his idea, right? So, probability to, ru or to ruin things, uh, um, not to ruin things, when you do halfway operation, will be small. But you have to collapse further and further. The idea is uh, you do it in the following way. You see? Rather than showing you the algorithm, let's first look at this. You Take your graph and you run your randomized procedure four times. 
because it's a randomized procedure, it will produce, in all likelihood, it will pro produce different answers. So you get these guys, probability that you survive when you get here is one quarter. Probability that you survive here is also one quarter, one quarter, and one quarter. So if you have four instances and probability of survival is one quarter, it means that you have a reasonable chance to, to survive this. Now, now you do exactly the same on all of these four graphs. You run again collapsing into half of the size, so the size is n over quarter, and then each of the results you collapse once again, collapsing it to n over 8. Now notice, deeper you go, more and more likely you are to mess it up, but the number of instances grows exponentially, right? So the idea is, as the probability of failure increases, you generate that many more instances to compensate for that, okay? So you see, the, it, uh, recursively, you run randomized algorithm four times, and then you recursively call this con contraction on all four uh, outputs, and you do it for as long as uh, you have more than two vertices, uh, okay. So how much does it cost to do that? Uh, well, the recurrence is, uh, runtime is uh, to collapse things to size n over two. Each time you collapse a vertex, you have to look at all other vertices and update uh, the edges, right? So it's n, right? Uh, and you do it n over two times, so it is quadratic. So each collapse costs you quadratic, and for each case of graph of size n, you produce four graphs of size n over two, right? So these four partitions, uh, four runs, uh, cost you O n squared, Right, and then you have four, you recursively apply to all four of them, so you have this. And then master theorem tells you immediately what is n to the log b of a, log sub b of a, right? It's a log with basis two of four, which is two, so this is quadratic, this is quadratic, so master theorem tells you this runs in time n squared times log n. Now that's really a good runtime for something that uh, when you do it deterministically runs in power v to the fourth, okay? Now we have to see with this proliferation of cases, what is the probability that at least one of these gazillion many guys at the very end will retain the mean cut, right? Well, the probability is simple. You can immediately see the recursion. Probability to survive uh, of graph n is uh, uh, probability to survive on each branch to survive up to here is one quarter. And probability to survive all the way down is p of n over two, right? So, um, probability for success is one minus probability of failure on all branches, all four branches. So this is one minus probability of failure on the single branch to the power four, right? Because you have to fail on all of the branches. And this is one minus, right? And this we write as one minus probability of success of one branch. So you get a recursion, probability of success on a size, graph of size n is this, one minus 
and then this. And now for compactness, let's introduce Pn to be that probability for the graph of size n. And you get this recurrence, right? And if you do a little bit of algebra, when you take this to the fourth power, you can see that this is bigger than that. Uh, when uh, so the total, because probabilities are smaller than one, right? So this is bigger than this, and then by a simple substitution, again, uh, you have to guess because um, uh, master theorem cannot help you here. It's a nonlinear relationship. But then it's easy to verify by induction using this fast induction, right? You prove that something is true for n over 2 implies true of n. Well, if this is true for all n, then it's true for uh, if implication is true for all n, it's true, the fact is true for all n. So you assume that this holds, you substitute, we know that this is bigger than that. By induction hypothesis, this is bigger than, the, one can see that it's monotonically increasing, that this will be bigger than that, right? Because this quadratic, uh, is p is smaller than 1, so when p is smaller than 1, this will be increasing in 0, 1. So this will be bigger than this. Then log n over 2 is just log n minus 1. And if you multiply both sides by this times this and you do algebra, you verify that this is also true. So voila, you get that p of n is also bigger than n from this assumption. So then you conclude that it is true for all n. So probability of success. It's still not great, but it's no longer tragic, right? Because probability to succeed is 1 over log n. And log n grows really slowly, right? Uh, it kind of exponentially slowly, so this means uh, that you have a reasonable chance of success, but you have to boost it. So uh, what you do now, you run the whole this procedure log n squared many times, right? So what is then the probability of uh, success? Well, this is 1 minus probability of the failure in each run. So 1 minus 1 over log n to the power log n squared. And now you use the fact that when n is large, uh, where k is large, then 1 minus 1 over k to the power k is very close to 1 over e, e is the natural log basis, right? Um, that's easy to, uh, to, to see. So um, this means right, that uh, I can take one of the logs from the power and get e to the minus one and then to the power of the remaining log. And lo and behold, I get e one minus e to the minus log n, which is, of course, one over e to the log n, which is just one over n. So if you, the number of vertices in your graph are in tens of thousands, which happens in practical applications, then the probability that mean of the results, probability that the mean, if you take, so each of these provides one estimate for the mean cut. You take the minimum of all of these, and this is mean cut with probability that is really uh, reasonably large, because if n is of the order 10,000, this is almost one. So you have to be really, really unlucky to, to miss it. So what is the total runtime of the algorithm? Well, the recursive business runs in time n squared log n. And then you run the whole algorithm log n squared many times, right? So you get that this is n squared log n cube 
And this is a really, really huge saving, uh, savings because the fastest way deterministically how we know how to do it is uh, n to the fourth. So by this randomized algorithm with very large probability, you reduce this to a really, a really, this log is uh, um, log e, right? So this is... Uh, uh, um, uh, grows extremely, uh, extremely slowly, right? So this will be, um, this will be much, much smaller than n to the fourth. So for practical applications, Karger algorithm runs much faster. And of course, once Karger came up with this brilliant idea, then people jumped onto it and found. Uh, uh, I think the bound is improved considerably, but I don't remember exactly how much better. But uh, this really gives you the flavor of the construction. The rest is kind of technicalities, mambo jumbo. So what is the idea? You have an algorithm that has a reasonable chance of succeeding. Uh, one quarter, that's not too bad, right? Well, if it's one quarter to succeed, I'll repeat it four times to increase my chance of survival, right? But now, as um, we saw that uh, uh, as the size of the graph decreases, the probability of injury dramatically increases, right? Uh, probability uh, is just minusculous. Uh, uh, to survive if you keep com, uh, contracting to the single edge. But as the size of the graph decreases and probability of failure increases, you produce more and more copies uh, or more and more instances uh, on which you apply your algorithm, right? So probabilities to mess it up here, right? Uh, will be, you know, uh, so, so the, just you proliferate the instances as an, uh, um, um, as you, so you produce more and more instances uh, and this offsets uh, kind of uh, accumulation of probabilities of the failure, right? Because these one quarters keep accumulating probability to succeed here is one quarter and on this one, one quarter. So it's only one over 16 here. And then one quarter of that for this guy. So probability gets smaller and smaller, but the number of instances gets larger and larger. So probability decreases exponentially, but also the number of instances increases exponentially. And lo and behold, it keeps the probability of failure in check, and you get that uh, probability of the failure is uh, only one over log n, and then the calculation that I showed you here produces a recurrence that has a reasonably large probability of success because, you see, even though this is relatively small, if you repeat your experiment log n squared many times, then clearly what you get is uh, through this inequality, you get something that stays uh, very close to one for a very large n. And this gives you really kind of guts of a sophisticated uh, probabilistic algorithm that includes uh, a lot of non-trivial steps, right? took uh, real uh, ingenuity to, to come up with this one. Okie dokie, so uh, read this at home because, as I said, I spent uh, an eternity making the slides and uh, enjoy Karger's min cut. That's good enough for today. Sorry, I cannot have office hours. My ear is terrorizing me still. Uh, so I have to go home, but uh, anyone wanted to see me? <laughs>